In this video, I'll be showing you how I created this Battle Angel inspired cyborg villain in Photoshop. I actually stole some tricks from Benny Productions in this one, so be sure to stick to the end because I'm going to share my new techniques for creating shadows. As soon as Clinton Lofthouse dropped the Cyber Dystopia stock bundle, I knew I had to do something with it, so I went into this pack and I took a shot from the Aether collection. Now, the good thing about this bundle is that there's like 60 pre-composited images that are PNG or PSD so that made this robot project a lot faster and a lot quicker or should I say cyborg this is a cybernetic being now a lot of the techniques used to create this composite are based on the pen tool um, it's long-winded it takes a long time but it's my preferred method for working the first step here that I'm going through is creating a dedicated selection layer and I use these all the time a selection layer is basically a new layer filled with white and then at any time I can go and command click that selection as you see there to selectively remove or edit elements so in this case created a selection layer based on the leg area added a layer mask and created a selection based on a selection layer and then filled the layer mask with black so this is basic Photoshop 101 the only fancy thing here is that there's a dedicated layer filled with white that I can use that selection at any time and as we get further into this one you'll see how those selection layers come into play all the time the robotic elements that you see here these are from Neo stock and it's from the uh, Neo stock creature kit and it's basically androids robots um, skeletons everything all in the same poses so you can mix and match and interconnect all these elements this stock pack was created for the purpose of doing work exactly like this so the initial idea was take this model remove all of the skin elements on the body and replace it with android parts as you can see here big problem however I didn't like the glossy white look of the panels I would have preferred it to be chrome or a muted gray and you'll see how we address that later in the video repeating the process of the legs we've got a selection layer on the layer stack there using that selection to create uh, a mask so masking out those skin elements and then with the freehand lasso just grabbing android elements and replacing the body parts that have been chopped out the same will be done for the belly and torso elements as you can see here so pen tool to create the selection a new layer fill that selection with white and then you can use the bog standard layer mask to remove those elements and then replace with your robotic parts now even though I'm using the stock bits in here these types of rendered assets are available from other micro stop websites uh, such as Shutterstock or Adobe Stock. Before we started making our own assets, I personally used um, Adobe Stock all the time for getting these CG elements, but they didn't—they weren't always in the poses that I wanted. So in the end, we just started making all this stuff in-house. Like I mentioned before the white panels really weren't working for me you can see there we kind of skipped over it but I isolated the panels from the rest of the robotic elements because I only selectively wanted to edit those panels I didn't want all the mechanics in between to be edited or amended here this is a, a technique I like to use all the time and that's camera raw filter it's a fast and effective what you see is what you get method for editing things on the fly and if you wanted to do it in a non-destructive manner you can turn the layer into a smart object first and then use the um, camera raw I didn't actually keep this look in the end you guys may remember from the other tutorials I always like to keep the mistakes in because that's an accurate representation of what the artistic process is truly like now this trick here for creating shadows I actually stole this from Benny Productions I used to use levels but now I'm using an exposure 
adjustment layer. Now this is really important, this bit. You'll notice that I cycle in between the original and the new version. And the reason why I'm doing that is to copy and mimic the shadows. So I show the background, I show the original, and then with the soft edge round brush, hit B for brush, I paint onto that exposure adjustment layer and then try and mimic and replicate the shadows from the original source. And that's the process that you can see there. If you look at the layer stack to the top right, you can see all of those different selection layers. So at any time that I want to selectively edit or add shadows to only those elements, I can go command and click onto that layer icon. If you're on a PC, that's control and click. That creates a selection and then anything that I do is constrained within those pixels. Uh, a lot of times uh, clipping masks are good, but because a composite like this is so intricate, you, I, I prefer to use those selection layers over clipping masks because there are some limitations with clipping masks for reordering layers in the stack. If you're a newbie watching this, please don't be intimidated. This is just the basic fundamentals of Photoshop, but on steroids pretty much. So this is something that I do all the time. I always use mood boards, uh, reference images, and have them on hand. I wanted to mimic and replicate the flavor and vibe of Alita Battle Angel. The uh, Rodriguez film, really loved it. One of my favorite family films ever. So I bounce back and look at that reference throughout this project. Now, the character that I wanted to create, I wanted it to be insectoid, um, like, much like the other lady with the kind of insect appendages. I wanted to create my own Alita kind of cyborg villain, something 100% new. So I went on Adobe stock, looked up robot insects, wasn't disappointed, chopped out the elements that I wanted, and then I'll inc incorporate those. So these are just CG renders that are sold on stock photography websites, Adobe Stock, Shutterstock, whatever, whatever you use, you'll be able to find stuff like this. Now, now this step here is pretty typical of my workflow, and most people will not do this. This is, I'm, I'm a strange artist, I'm a slow artist, I'm not fa fast like the young guys, but I wanted the yellow panels to be edited so they're not a neon yellow, and the same way that I did with the robot, I did with the panels. So I created a pen tool selection around just the yellow and then created a selection layer like before. And here you can see me using that selection to selectively edit only the yellow of the panels and not affect the shiny chrome elements. This is not typical Photoshop workflow. You, I doubt you'll really see anyone else do this kind of stuff. But this is my own approach and the way that I managed to stand out in the very crowded indie publishing market. Because my work looked a little bit different, because I did things a little bit different, I managed to create a very nice career for myself and kind of stand out from the crowd. More insect elements. These, again, are renders from Adobe Stock. I'm zipping through this fast because I don't think you guys want to watch me use the pen tool for four hours. But chop these out now the reason why i don't use um any magic wand tools or anything like that to knock those whites out is because no matter how good those tools are the edges will still be script uh crispy so i know there will be people screaming in the comments oh you could have just used magic wand or alpha channels i like the absolute 100 percent meticulous precision of the pen tool no algorithm yet can beat what I can do with the good old-fashioned mouse and the good old-fashioned pencil. Here we could see the elements being brought together, so positioned, transformed as necessary. The exposure um, adjustment layer was used to create the shadows and they were manually painted in using the soft edge brush. As I said earlier on in the video, I, I wasn't happy with that muted um, grey panel. I wanted a dirty looking chrome to match the source image that I had on the mood board. 
So here you can see me bouncing into camera raw. Guys, don't forget such thing as a pause button. If this is going a bit fast for you, you can pause or slow down the time of this video and you can see the exact settings that are used here on camera raw. So I like to use the basic settings. Often I use the grain to, to give a bit more texture when you remove detail from stuff. We've done lots of videos on camera raw, but it's a very fast and very awesome way to edit elements on the fly. Now the overall kind of construction is done. I wanted a bit of um, a, a scratched metal effect to match the insect lady, the reference that I had from before. And I've just took uh, textures with scratched metal pasted them within the layer group or use the layer mask and the selection layers to ensure that those textures are only applied to the areas that I want them to. So they were set to things like soft light and overlay. And we're getting to the final stretch here. So this is a bit of processing. Now, before you start shrieking in the comments, this piece was intended to be a three quarter, um, portrait image and in the, instead I ended up using the one sheet movie poster ratio and doing a full figure. Now the lighting on the boots and underneath the boots that is completely incorrect. I was just rushing this through to meet the deadline but when I return to this piece I will fix the lighting um, at the boots but it, the main sell for me was getting that YouTube thumbnail image because that's what got you guys to click. You couldn't really put the full um, figure in the thumbnail because the thumbnails, it's like a, a billboard in the street. It has to be big, punchy and impactful. Right, for a little bit of final polish here, I'm going through a dodge and burn process. Now I am a rank amateur with dodge and burn. I've literally only just started using um, a graphics tablet. So this is me getting in some practice trying to accentuate the lights and the darks give it a bit more of a stylized painterly aesthetic i do a final little polish at the end my favorite go-to oil paint process just to give it that bit of finish which you can see here get a lot of questions about this i did do an entire video dedicated to this process and i'll put that in the description below so you can check that out actually what i'll do is i'll put it up as an end card so if you want to see this final post processing that I go through to do this piece, I'll link that in the end card above. So that's it for this Battle Angel walkthrough. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Check out the end card above and you'll see how I did that post processing trick. That'll do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Catch you at the next video. See you then.